All right, welcome to angles formed by secants and tangents level two. Now in our very first example, they're gonna ask us to find the angle of HGI. Now, if you're a little confused by these symbols, one thing we wanna notice about an angle symbol is that it forms a very sharp point. And the reason that is, is that whenever I see these two lines and they intersect at point G, secants by the way, we know that that forms a sharp point. Well, that's always where our angle is gonna be. So, I wanna find angle HGI. Well, the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna figure out what kind of vertex is this? Is this a vertex that is inside, on, or outside the circle? And I think it's very apparent that this is what we call a vertex that is outside the circle. Which is very important because that may, means that we'll have to use this formula. The measure of angle 1 is equal to 1 half arc x minus arc y. And that minus actually comes from when it's a vertex outside the circle. So, let's go ahead and start labeling the things that we know. Well, we'll actually, funnily enough, start with what we don't know. We don't know angle G, uh, HGI. So, when I'm writing this, I'll still continue to write the measure of angle 1 equals 1 half parentheses. Now, let's go ahead and switch to a different color here. And when I'm asking myself, what is arc X? Well, I know that's going to have to be my larger arc. And so my larger arc is 117. Okay. And then, of course, that will be minus our smaller arc. And our smaller arc will always be arc Y, which in this case was 36. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and start working this out. We're actually kind of lucky here. When we look at this right side, we don't see any letters or variables. So all we're going to do is just start simplifying. So we know we'll simplify what's inside the parentheses first. I would always encourage you to do this math using your calculator so you don't make a mistake. And so 117 minus 36 would give us 81. Well, now we know that when two things are side by side, they're being multiplied. And so we know that the measure of angle 1 is equal to, see, 1 half could be 0.5 times 81, which gives us 40.5 degrees. So I know that this angle right there is going to be 45 point, I'm sorry, 40.5 degrees. All right. Now, for example two, we want to find the measure of angle HGI. Now, this might look a little bit different to you from our previous one. The reason being that this line right here is not a secant, it's a tangent. It only touches the circle in one place. And, of course, this line is still a secant, which we are pretty familiar with. But what we see is that these two lines still form a minor and a major arc. So, let's bring, this brings us to our very first question. What type of vertex is this? Is this a vertex that right here is inside, on, or outside the circle? And of course, it's pretty obvious that this is another case of a vertex outside the circle. In fact, whenever you have a secant or tangent, they will always form a vertex outside the circle. So, this will bring us back to our formula that we've been using. The measure of angle 1 is equal to 1 half arc x minus arc y. Now let's go ahead and start filling in the things that we know. Number one, we see this symbol right here. We don't know HGI. And you can kind of match up this symbol with this symbol and understand, hey, that is our unknown. We don't know the measure of angle one. That's going to equal one half times. And let's see, for our arc x, I coded it using this red, and so let's see, we know our larger arc, arc x, is equal to 88, minus, and let's go to this magenta, this minor arc, ji, which is 22 degrees. So, let's go ahead and start simplifying. The reason we want to simplify is because we don't see any letter or variable over here to the right, so we'll just kind of follow our order of operations. We know the measure of angle 1 is equal to 1 half times, and let's see, 88 minus 22 would give us 66. Now right here, we know that when two things are side by side, they're being multiplied. 
And if you're a little bit unfamiliar with this, I'd encourage you to grab your calculator. One half you could write as 0.5, and let's see, 0.5 times 66 would give us 33 degrees. All right, I hope this helps, and I will see you all in our level three.